I stream over at twitch.tv slash feather.io. You guys know this. And the most common question, by a long shot, that I get asked is, Guardian of Rakan? What's the big idea? Is it good? Is it bad? What in the world is going on? Okay. Let me make this simple for anyone that just wants a straight answer. No. Guardian of Rakan is bad. Do not take Guardian on Rakan. What you should be taking instead is Glacial Augment. That is my opinion as the highest ranked Rakan player in the world. If that's all you're looking for is the straight answer, there you go. Just gave you what you're looking for. For anyone that wants the explanation, I will not go into it now. And to start, we will we will say one thing first and make this clear. Rakan is an aggressive playmaking champion. Rakan is not a Janna. He's not a Soraka. He does not play in the back line with fights. He dives in. He plays aggressively. His alt and his W, his knockoff, are designed to be jump-in aggressive abilities. And to some extent, so is his E, which allows him to more seamlessly jump into combat off of an ally. No one plays Rakan for his utility enchanter elements, also known as his Q heal and poke and his E shield. These are very underwhelming elements that do not do a whole lot. His Q heal is the only enchanter heal in the game that you can miss with all the other ones being point and click. Uh, it's very telegraphed. It's got 900 range, doesn't go through minions. The poke damage is very not good. It self-roots you for a quarter of a second. His Rakan's Q, to put it simply, is one of the worst abilities in League of Legends. It just does not matter if you ever really get hit by it. At, at worst, it is a... Oh, it's annoying that he gets a small heal, and that's a that's really it. And his E, you have to sacrifice mobility for the sake of getting a shield that, yes, while it is above average, once again, you have to sacrifice the most important element to Rakan's kit, his mobility, just to use. So with that being said, even if his Q, Q and E have some silver lining effectivenesses, right? Like, oh, his Q's AoE and his E is above average shield, you also make the sacrifices by this ability just otherwise being very easy to dodge, and this one sacrificing your mobility. So point being is... His enchanter elements are very underwhelming, and his W and his alt, his most impactful elements to his kit, are designed to be aggressive playmaking abilities that you jump into the middle of enemies, like groups of enemies, and use. So, to put it very, once again, very plainly, Rakan is, a, is a, an aggressive playmaking champion. He is not a passive Janna or Soraka. So, now that we've made that clear, obviously, we go down to the runes. And this is what the biggest, like, argument I get. Is that, well, Feather Daddy, Guardian is higher win rate. And there's actually a reason for this, despite Glacial Augment still being a better rune. And that's because the playstyle of Guardian fits the playstyle of the Rakan players. Ever since patch 9.9, .9, when Rakan's engage became much more difficult to utilize due to the 0.5 second delay in using Flash or W, creating a very, very large amount of time for the enemy team to be able to react and use CC, mobility, or, or whatnot to dodge. Um, such a long sense, I lost where I was going with that. But my point being, Rakan's engage became very difficult post patch 9.9. .9. So, if these average Joe Schmo players are having a hard time engaging, because it just has so much counterplay built into it nowadays, well, then they're just going to go for the easy passive rune, which is how they're going to be playing now. If Rakan's engage is very unrewarding and very difficult, it makes more sense for a player that is not well equipped to play this champion to just play Rakan passively and as a secondary engage. And don't get me wrong, playing Rakan as a secondary engage is definitely the best way to play him, but that's only if your teammates draft uh, in a way that facilitates that and plays around Rakan. Uh, most teams that see Rakan will think they have the primary engage handled, when in reality they are playing with some Guardian Joe Schmo that is too scared to engage, so thus they will wait for an enemy team to make a mistake, or um, or for them to engage first, or for their allies to engage first. They are still a secondary engage, even if they are the primary engage for their team, because that's just the playstyle of the Rakan players that play him nowadays. They just play him very, very passively. So, if you're going to play Rakan underneath a turret like 99% of Rakan players do, well, it doesn't really make much sense to run Glacial Augment. Because why would you be running a proactive rune when you yourself are not well equipped to be able to utilize this proactive rune? Instead, it makes more sense for you to take a rune that is more well equipped to your playstyle, which is Guardian in this case. It's still way worse. Being a proactive Rakan player and running the proactive rune of Glacial Augment is a lot more effective than playing passively as Rakan and running a passive rune in the, in the form of Guardian. It's a very huge strength difference there. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's because Rakan synergizes much better with Glacial Augment than he does with Guardian. Guardian has a lot of anti-synergies with 
Rakan that are really, really bad. Uh, we mentioned that Rakan's E is above average in terms of shield, which it is. So if you ever wanted to use that shield to block any sort of damage, which it'll probably cover, you will eat your ally, obviously. But the problem is then Guardian will think, oh, you guarded your ally, I'm going to instantly proc now anyways. So even if your E shield already has the damage covered, Guardian will automatically just proc on its own. Going on a potentially 90 second, well, you're not going to have E level 1 most likely, but it'll go on this like, you know, 70 to 90 second cooldown in the, in the early game, right? even though your E shield had already blocked the entirety of the damage. So it'll proc when you don't even want it to proc and then go on this absurdly long cooldown. And even just Guardian on its own, right? Oftentimes you're blocking one auto attacks with the damage every like, once again, 70 to 90 seconds in the early game. That's really not good. That's a really long cooldown to not really block a whole lot of stuff. It does go on yourself as well, but realistically, that shield is not going to be blocking for yourself. You're blocking it for your ally, and that's why it procced, because they're probably auto-attacking one of you. So there is that anti-synergy with Guardian for Rakan. Meanwhile, you also have Glacial Augment, which has really good synergy with Rakan. Reason being, Rakan is the only engaged support in the entire game that does not have a second basic ability that CCs. Every other engaged support in the game has one, except for Rakan, right? Just a few examples. Thresh has Hook and Flay. Blitzcrank, Knock Up and Hook, or, you know, vice versa. Uh, Pike, Hook and Stun, right? Even Rel, Rel, not a good champ, right? Knock Up and AoE Stun. All of them have two, a primary engage spell and then a follow-up CC spell on their basic abilities. Rakan only has his one second knockup. And right, some of the champions like Tarek, even though he's not an engaged champ or an engaged champ, has a 1.5 second stun. And Morgana, also a support, not really an engaged champ either, but she has a, a two to three second root, right? So, with that being said, um, Glacial is adding something to Rakan's kit that desperately Rakan lacks. Rakan greatly, greatly lacks CC, like tremendously lacks CC. And the fact that you get to add CC, even though it's just a slow, to your kit is phenomenal. Because a one second knockup does absolutely nothing. It is such a pitifully low amount. And so to be able to add CC to a kit that desperately lacks it is just phenomenal. And it's not gonna randomly proc when you don't want it to. It'll proc when you jump in with your W or a proc when you jump in with your alt and W. It'll always proc when you want it to, which is fantastic. So you have Guardian, which procs oftentimes when you don't want it to on a really long cooldown. And you have Guardian, which is on a much lower cooldown and also procs exactly when you want it to and combos beautifully out of Rakan's W. So that's fantastic. So you have the pro synergy here and the anti synergy here. Uh, but some of you may be saying, okay, well, even though that's the case, maybe I just want to play defensively, right? So I'm going to take Guardian. Well, honestly, Guardian's better defensively as well, in addition to being better offensively, obviously. Obviously, Guardian has no offensive potential whatsoever. It is just a shield. So obviously, Glacial wins that one by a long shot, which the C with the CC that we just talked about. But defensively, Glacial Augment's slow denies... Uh, a lot of enemy champions, the ability to get within range to get that auto attack off. So oftentimes this slow will discourage or even just completely prevent enemies from walking forward to get an additional auto attack off. I've had fights, and this consistently is the case, where they don't, they miss two to three auto attacks even. Just, just because of Glacial Augment. Worst case, they miss one auto attack. You know how before we mentioned how Guardian blocks one auto attack's worth of damage? Well... Glacial Augment's slow, preventing enemy AD carries, or really anyone, to be able to walk in to get an auto attack off, also then, thereby, prevents one auto attack from, from going off. Which is awesome, because then it also provides the slow afterwards, which prevents chasing, and also prevents them from running away if you wanted to turn around. So the fact that it can block one auto attack just by the slow, and even if, even if it's not just preventing auto attacks, but also just straight up reducing the damage that it deals, 15% to your allies. Which, so that, that's amazing. It can either slow and flat out prevent people from being able to get within range to deal the damage, or it'll just straight up make them deal 15% reduced damage. So even defensively, this is so much better. It's on a much shorter cooldown, has that AoE 15% damage reduction to your allies, which by the way, in the mid to late game, when they're dealing thousands of damage in a matter of seconds, reducing that by 15% is phenomenal. And even in the early game, 15%, if you block that on like two to three auto attacks, is very, very comparable to Guardian. So even in the early game, when Guardian's supposed to be, like, the best, it still manages to get pretty consistently outclassed by Glacial in a defensive manner, even though it's an offensive rune. So, anyhow. 
Um, there is one scenario that Guardian's not all that bad. And that is the infamous Caitlyn Morgana matchup. Because Caitlyn is Rakan's worst AD carry matchup, in my opinion. And Morgana is obviously up there as one of Rakan's worst support matchups as well. So that is like probably the worst possible lane because if Morgana ever lands a root, then Caitlyn will land a trap follow up combo, which you will just be obliterated from 100 to 0, guaranteed. It just, you just die. Yeah, it's very, very strong. So. Obviously, in that case, you're never going to be able to jump on Caitlyn because she has 650 range and she has her E dash and there's obviously Black Shield to prevent you from ceasing people all together. So all those things working in combination make it just impossible for Rakan to be able to engage and CC anybody. So obviously, Glacial will never proc. So in that case, yeah, Guardian's probably better in the laning phase then. Just because at least it's blocking some poke damage and Caitlyn likes to poke and at least it gets to proc and do something, whereas Glacial can't do anything at all in that landing phase. However, even in the mid to late game, we mentioned how that 15% damage reduction in the mid to late game is so much stronger because it's a percentage. Um, so even in like the mid to late game, Glacial vastly outscales Guardian, obviously offensively, which is tremendously the highlight of the rune, as much as I'm talking mostly about the defensive uh, comparison, but also defensively, it obviously outscales it as well. So even though, yes, in a Caitlyn Morgana game, um, or in lane, Guardian is better in the early game, it still gets outscaled in gla uh, by Glacial Augment by the mid to late game, which is consistently the case in all matchups, except usually Glacial's better in the early game too. So, okay. So now Guardian's better. Or, pff, wrong one. That's embarrassing. So Glacial Augment's better. Now what? W where do we go from there, right? Maybe, maybe you still don't like it. Maybe you're still like, okay, I don't like Glacial Augment. Uh, I don't, I don't want to take it for whatever reason. You just don't want to take Glacial Augment. Maybe you still want to play passively, right? We talked about how a lot of uh, Joe Schmover comp players just want to play defensively because maybe they feel a little uneasy about engaging and playing aggressively. Okay. Well, I feel you. Well, I I understand. I don't feel you. Play, playing Rakan aggressively, I think, is how he's meant to be played personally. But if you still feel this, this large inclination, is that even a word? If you feel this large urge to still play him defensively, well, there is this beautiful room called Summon Airy. Let's compare Summon Airy to Guardian now. So, Summon Airy, the reason why I'm even really suggesting this to you, is for one major reason. It has phenomenal synergy. Phenomenal synergy with Rakan's E. Rakan's E will shield once for three seconds, and then you can recast it a second time within five seconds. Most of you know this. So what you can do is you can E shield on your ally which I mentioned is above average shield, right? You can see it right there. So you get this above average shield and then you also apply the summon airy shield, which is 30 base level one, which is pretty great. So even just looking at the base amounts, 30 on 50, and realistically this is 60 and this is more like 33 or 34 in the early game. You have this amazing shield that goes so high, right? If you have like 34 plus 60, you're shielding for like 94. Wow, that's like... Two auto attacks or one auto attack from Draven because that champion is a tumor. Um, that's pretty good. But what gets even better is you can use it a second time. You can use Summon Airy twice because you have a five second recast timer. Airy will float its way back to you and you will get a second shield off with Summon Airy off of one E cast, which 94 plus 94 is, what is that, like 188? That is a lot. That's a lot of shielding from a level one ability. That's tremendous. Uh, additionally, if Rakan ever does. Uh, an EW playstyle, which is very commonplace for attempting to engage on any anyone with, like, a brain, really, well, then this works for that, too. Because you can EW and use the far side mechanic for, of Rakan's E to give you a little bit more distance and allow you to get within range to W on top of the enemy, right? Very common Rakan uh, engage playstyle. Summon Airy works beautifully with that. Whereas if you try to do that with Guardian, for example, Guardian, you'll EW. Oh, Guardian proc'd off like basically nothing. Okay, by the time you W in your seat and the CC ran out, oh, your Guardian shield's gone. Didn't really block anything. It kind of went on cooldown well, for no reason. But but Airy will just give them the big shield and you can W in and knock at the lower damage aspect, but still keep the large shield aspect. So it's very, very good synergy there. Um... Another thing, and I kind of failed to talk about minor runes. I should probably go over the minor runes just briefly, right? Obviously, with Summon Airy, it has phenomenal minor runes. You have Nimbus Cloak, which is fantastic for engaging, especially if you don't feel super comfortable with it, because it gives you that extra movement speed on the flash. You have Celerity, which is also fantastic combos with Nimbus Cloak, and also combos with Water Walking, which is phenomenal for helping Rakan roam in this very roaming-centric meta for support. 
So these three work beautifully in sync with each other, and they all feel really good to use. And that's the most important thing, uh, because when you compare it to, say, the Resolve Tree secondary runes, these don't feel very good at all for Rakan. In fact, most of these have sort of anti-synergy, very similar to the Keystone Guardian, right? Rakan is a range champion, the lowest range range champion in the entire game with a range of 300. So Rakan deals 16% reduced damage to turrets, just like all range champions do, which means Demolish deals reduced damage. Also, because Rakan does not build tank items, because he builds a pretty enchanter-focused build, things like Redemption, Puge Fire, Battle Song, things like that, he does not build tons of max health to make super use out of the scaling anyways. Same goes with Font of Life, which is probably the best option of these three, but Rakan does not build tons of health, meaning he does not really get super large value off of Font of Life, like a champion like Braum may get out of it. And Shield, Shield Bash, frankly, just should not be run. The damage it gives you is obsolete, and as is the armor and magic resist it gives you, because the shield is really not that big until maybe the late game, but by then you're probably still going to get blown up entirely regardless. So do not take Shield Bash. That's I feel like there's been a trend that more people are taking Shield Bash. It is not good. Do not take Shield Bash. Font Life is the best one, but it is still, it's still iffy because this entire tree is kind of iffy. Going onwards, though, um, because... Because Rakan has Fey Feathers, which a large, which is a large part of his uh, his laning phase trade patterns, where he tries to maybe like say land a Q and force Nate Carry to stop and auto attack them, and then he gets a free Q on them. He can run away and then have his Fey Feathers regenerate. For those of you who don't know, if Rakan takes damage on his passive shield and then walks out of combat, it will regenerate the moment he leaves combat, which is five seconds without taking damage. So if you take ninety nine damage and he has a hundred shield on his passive, it'll immediately regenerate all of it back assuming he leaves combat and it doesn't break that is a very crucial element to Rakan's early game in regards to not getting poked out of lane which he is very weak to because his engage range is so pathetically small with that being said because he plays around fey feather shield second wind and bone planning have these awkward anti-synergies if you are not taking damage because your passive shield is actually taking damage which means you are not taking damage second wind won't actually proc and that's kind of awkward. Bone planning, same deal. Say an Ezreal auto and autos and then Qs you. But ordinarily, for another champion, you'd block 30 damage on Ezreal's Q, the second hit. But for Rakan, maybe his Fae Feathers blocks the first hit entirely. And then his Q, Ezreal's Q, still lands. That then breaks Rakan's shield and makes him take damage for the first time, procking bone playing, but then Ezreal walks away. Because Fae Feathers can block entire hits, it can make bone plating awkward. Because that means it won't come as soon as you take the first hit. Maybe it can come on the second hit. But maybe that's like too far into the combo already. And you won't really get as much value out of bone plating. And, and unflinching is good. But it, to be fair it has been nerfed. As have uh, all of these in the middle tree by the way. They've all been nerfed. As has Guardian several times within the last year. Like three or four times really. So you have anti-synergy riddled everywhere within the Guardian tree. Right? Uh, between not building tanky to not get super high effectiveness off on the health val or health scalings on these to not being really super synergetic with Rakan's passive Fey Feathers kind of trading style or, you know, anti-poke, preventing yourself from getting poked play style uh, and then flinching just being nerfed, obviously. It, they're just not super fantastic. Um, but then let's compare it to going back to Glacial. I know it's kind of, we're done with that section, but let's go back to the Glacial and talk about the secondary runes or minor runes for the Inspiration Tree. Not only do you get this phenomenal keystone, but you, like, but you also get these awesome minor runes as well. Very comparable to the likes of Sorceries, actually, which feel really good and feel really proactive. Um, you have Stopwatch, which is a phenomenal playmaking tool that oftentimes allows you to bait in enemies to prevent yourself from dying and also having them die. That is a 600 gold difference. That means instead of them getting 300 gold, you get 300 gold, which is a massive way to help turn around a game and make a really big play. Many times you can come in clutch with Stopwatch and turn fights around with it. It's really, really good. It's game winning and you get it for free. You also have Biscuits, which is definitely the weakest of the three, but even Biscuits can save you from dying to things like Ignite. It also helps with Rakan's mana problems, because Rakan has the worst mana and mana regen stats of any enchanter in the game beyond level 2, with Tarek being worse at level 1, but having harder scaling or harder growth stats for both mana and mana regen. So this can help offset Rakan's mana issues and also save his life from time to time, which that's also saving 300 gold from the enemy team, and that's awesome. Uh, and then lastly, you have probably the best one, honestly, which is Cosmic Insight. Uh, Rakan, to put it plainly, is probably one of the most flash reliant engaged champions in the entire game because he is such an easy to, like, you know, see coming, e like, very, very telegraphed, easy to dodge engage. So having the ability to use flash during that engage is everything. Flash is the only thing that makes Rakan's engage even viable, really, against competent players. So having the use of your flash more often is essential to the character. 
So you have these you have these really effective elements that feel very similar in proactivity and effectiveness to the sorcery tree. And then you have this kind of anti-synergy tree in the form of Guardian, yet it is still by far the most picked with 51,000. And Guardian doesn't even have a tenth of that. It's just beneath a tenth. But that is the whole comparison. So that's really about it. That's the short form of uh, comparing all of these runes to each other. To to summarize once again, you kind of have Glacial Augment, which really synergizes well with a proactive Rakan player, which is fantastic. Works well with the abilities that you actually want to play Rakan around, is W and his alt. Um, you have Guardian, which synergizes well with a passive play style, but in reality, it's just not the most optimal way to play Rakan. Yes, you don't have to engage at every single point, but at the same time, taking an entire rune that just has anti-synergy in it, and also the minor runes, for the sake of running something that matches your playstyle, probably just means you should be playing Janna or Soraka instead, and you should probably adapt a more aggressive playstyle that works better with the champion. Not to gatekeep, but that's just the truth. And then also, if you really wanted to go something that is defensive, I would go Summon Aerie, which is definitely better than Guardian, has really great synergy in not only Summon Aerie, but also in the awesome minor runes that feel fantastic to run. So that's everything. My first take was an hour and a half. So this is 21 minutes. So this is actually pretty decent. So that is the explanation for this. Um, I hope that answered any of your questions. This was pretty short just for the sake of, you know, of it not being an hour and a half long. So hopefully this answered your questions as to why Glacial is definitely the best option for Rakan, why Guardian is not the best option for Rakan, uh, and why Summon Aerie is a pretty sweet and underutilized alternative to a defensive Guardian playstyle. But also, I don't remember if I touched on I'll touch on this one last thing before I go, is obviously there is the win rate discrepancy. And once again, I actually, I think maybe I did, I did touch on this. But once again, this is only lower just because you have players that are transitioning from playing Guardian Recon, moving over to playing Glacial Recon. Glacial Recon is kind of up and coming. It's been better than Guardian ever since it, it got uh, released at the beginning of Season 12. Players are just starting to catch on to it a bit nowadays. Um... And so while players are learning and going through that learning curve of like utilizing a proactive playstyle to make sure Glacial is its most effective, they are obviously finding it to be trickier if they're used to doing nothing and kind of just getting carried with Guardian and not having to worry about the rune to suddenly having to engage and utilize uh, a rune like Glacial. It's just a lot more difficult. So it's a big learning curve. So because of that, usually the win rate is being tanked by players that are just kind of getting into it. Because the sample size is so much lower, even if 20% of these are, are, are new players trying to adjust to a better rune, that is still 20, like 1,000 games of these 5,000 of players that are trying to make use of a rune that they're not totally comfortable yet. So don't let win rate discourage you. It is just being deflated by players learning uh, how to utilize it effectively. So just wanted to give that last little thing, just to, you know, in case you're discouraged about the win rate, do not worry about it. Win rate does not tell the whole full story, especially on a champion as complicated and nuanced as Rakan. So once again, use Glacial Augment. It is way better in every single way. It's got shorter cooldown. It synergizes with Rakan way better. It's better offensively and even better defensively, even though that's kind of the only game that Guardian can play at. And do not run Guardian. Anti-Synergy up the wazoo. And if you want to run something else, that is defensive, run Summon Aerie, works beautifully with an E-Shield playstyle, and also works really well with a nice EW classic Rakan landing phase playstyle, um, and has beautiful minor runes, just like uh, just like in the Inspiration Tree. So, hopefully that answer all your questions in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, I will catch you guys later. If you have any more Rakan related questions, feel free. I started out the, at the start of the video, but I do stream five days a week for 40 hours of, you know, per week at uh, twitch.tv slash featheredaylaw. Feel free to drop on over uh, and shoot me a question. I'm always reading chat, so I'd love to answer any Rakan related questions because I know this was on the quicker side in terms of a video. So, catch you guys later. Hopefully this was helpful. And later, sons and daughters. <laughs> That's a terrible outro. Anyway, later. Later, kids. <laughs> That's dad. That's so creepy. It's probably Daddy. It's not, that's, uh, that's enough. Later, guys. Thanks for watching. Mwah.